All right. Now listen for the word of the Lord that is recorded. Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard that he was making more disciples and baptizing more than John, although Jesus' disciples were baptizing, not Jesus himself. Therefore, he left Judea and went back to Galilee. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, which was near the land Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired from his journey, so he sat down at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me some water to drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy him some food, and the Samaritan woman asked, why do you, a Jewish man, ask for something to drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Jews and Samaritans didn't associate with one another. Jesus responded, if you recognized God's gift and who is saying to you, give me some water to drink, you would be asking him and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you don't have a bucket and the well is deep. Where would you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave this well to us and he drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up into eternal life. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And I want to invite Demetrio, who is our preacher today and a dearly beloved friend. Thank you, Demetrio. Let's give him some, some encouragement. Thank you, Brent, and thank you, Andy, and thank you all for Church on the Main for having me this day. And I bring you greetings, my brothers and sisters and sisters and brothers in Christ, in the name of the one who calls us all the beloved. In our gospel lesson today, we see that Jesus had left Judea, Judah, and he was headed in the direction of Galilee. In verse 4, that Brent read, Jesus had to go through Samaria. And this is no small detail, some might say. Most Jewish citizens avoided the country and citizens of Samaria at all costs. For over 700 years, radical hospitality extended between these parts of God's human family. Despite their differences and the difficulties, both groups claimed Jacob as a common ancestor. Jacob's well is still there, and the trip around Samaria took five days. The route that Jesus takes would only take two days. And yet, Jewish travelers refused to go through Samaria. The Samaritans were the others. They were the marginalized people living on the fringes of society. And some probably referred to them as the half-breeds or the mixed breeds. And in the 21st century lingo, as I asked my goddaughter last night what she would call, she would say, well, Uncle D, these would be technically considered to be a mixed racial group, or maybe an even multicultural, multi-ethic, and even a race that we don't want to be a part of. Their ethnicity, diversity, was not appreciated or valued. Again, we note that the text from John tells us that Jesus had to go through Samaria, or the amplified translation that says that it was necessary to go through Samaria, that, that was the call or the call that we must go through. Brothers and sisters, Jesus didn't take the easy way out. Jesus could have avoided Samaria altogether. However, Jesus indicated that he must go through Samaria. For Jesus had a mission. 
It was time that the Gentiles would hear the good news of God's kingdom. Jesus was on a campaign, one that would stretch privilege from the lawfully and replace it with equal access to room of God through worship and true brother and sisterhood. This is that Jesus who prayed to God for them who thou has been given, for they are yours and all mine are thine. I pray God, my Father, that they will be one as you are one and that they would believe that you have sent me and I have loved them. Jesus extends a universal invitation again and again. Hey there, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. Are you penniless? Come anyway. Buy and eat, listen to me, listen well, eat only the best, fill yourselves with only the finest, Pay attention, come close, come close now and listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nurturing words. I am making a lasting covenant with you, with all of you. Come to the waters, Eugene Patterson translation of Isaiah 55 verses 1 and 3. As a conversation between Jesus and the Samaritan sister takes place, Jesus extends an invitation to her to claim a new life, a new direction, a new identity as a child of God. You see, the transformational grace of God's love goes beyond one's race. It goes beyond one's social status. It goes beyond one's calling of what they might be, who they might love. My Jesus, your Jesus, takes time to sit with the sister on the well her skin color does not deter him. Her past life does not make any difference to him. He looks beyond who she is and who she has been and sees the child of God. This Jesus does not discount her worth. This Jesus does not condemn her. Oh, I believe that this is a salvation moment every time this scripture comes about. And even in times that we're living in now today, on the rise this morning, sisters and brothers, to hear that another person has died, on the rise to hear that there's more protesting and more rioting, on the rise on us just being able to vote in just a few weeks of change to come, I am reminded of the sister sitting at the well and Jesus coming to meet. And to the question I have for each of you today, are you willing to go to Samaria and go through Samaria? Are you willing to meet persons and ministry who do not look like you, who do not sound like you, who do not eat the food you eat, drink the coffee you drink, stop at Wawa and get that wonderful cup of joe in the morning? Are you willing to be with those who are marginalized are you willing, sisters and brothers, to go through Samaria this day and these difficult times and to truly say that you are a child of God? You see, friends, it was at this moment, this very moment, Jesus extended the right hand of fellowship and said, if your heart is like my heart, this, my brothers and sisters, sets the stage for transformation for her as well as for the Samaritan community. I believe that she cried out, fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsty of my soul. Jesus offered living water. I believe, my sisters and brothers, that my sister became the founding pastor of First Church of the Samaritan Community. I believe that she became the first evangelist. There are times in life when, nece when a necessity calls. The Holy Spirit has sent me to proclaim the good news to all. 
And that's to each of us as Christians here at the Church of on the Main. We are called to let a dying world know how good God is, even in these difficult and uncertain times. I believe, my friends, that our Asian and Hispanic and Latino brothers and sisters, our Native American, our Island Pacifics, our Africans and our African-American sisters and brothers are asking that we would open our hearts and open our doors and indeed walk with them. Walk with us. Like Jesus, we must choose the most difficult route. Challenge ourselves to open the doors of diversity in our church and in our community. And we begin with an explanation of self-examination and the terms of equality, and the terms of justice, and in the terms of brotherhood. We need to ask the question, what does it mean to open our hearts for the transformation of God's world to be the gospel today? My friends, we as Christians are called at a higher standard. We as Christians are called to have openness and acceptance and support all of God's people, no matter who they are, no matter what they might say they are or be, no matter what they look like, the clothes that they wear. But see, the table that we come to on Sunday morning is not our table. The place that we gather on Sunday morning is not ours but this is God's. This is God's table. This is God's church. And God calls us to be a part of the Jesus movement. And that is to welcome all God's people at all times and all places to come and have the rightful fellowship. The late Bishop Lynn Kelly, a retired Bishop of the United Methodist Church was elected in 1984 as the first African-American female bishop. This was history that was made. Bishop Kelly, dear friend's story was very wonderful as she was a member of the Virginia area of the United Methodist Church. Racism played a very strong part in her ministry, but she believed and the people believe that it was time for change. It was time for something new because there was a group of people that were not heard. In 1984, an election took place of Bishop Kelly. The California, Nevada area elected her as bishop. She was elected across lines. History was made. And in her speech and in her preaching, she said that racism does not belong in the church. Racism does not belong in the church. Friends, it is time in 2020 that we must show the world that our churches are not places of racism. Our churches are places where you can come to the well to talk to Jesus. You can come to the well to have healing. You can come to the well to have refreshing water that springs like never before. We, as followers of Jesus, we as change agents, must show Christ in all that we do. I don't think, sisters and brothers, that Christ wants us to go one way and say that only a certain particular kind can come to his church. We can't let's say that we love Christ in one breath and then the next say that we hate someone else or hate a decision that is made. But we have been charged to show radical hospitality to all who we encounter, just as Jesus did to the Samaritan woman. I am sure that the disciples were ticked off with Jesus that day. I am quite sure they had many questions running through their mind. Why in the world is he spending time talking to this woman? But Jesus knew that something had to happen at this well that day, that they had to meet because she had to go and tell others, come meet a man 
His name is Jesus. He knows all about me and he healed me. And I have some good news to share that this is a redeeming God. This is a God who will give you all that your heart's desires. This is a God who will make the crooked way straight. Come meet a man. Church on the main, you have gone through some difficulties. Signs have come down. Acts of racism has been shared all through the town of Middletown and throughout just Delaware and the nation. You have taken a stand as being a church to being the outsiders, to have particular flags to be waved, to show that persons are welcome to come into a fellowship and community. You have done the good fight. You have fought it and continue to fight it. Don't let situations and things hold you back. And some may ask a question, why are these things needed? They're needed because there are young persons and persons who don't know need to see Christ in action, Christ in movement. That the church on the main, as I shared with you before, is the beacon of hope, the light that many need to see. Dear friends, as a United Method is retired now, thank you, Jesus, and Brent continues to call me out of retirement. Oftentimes when I travel through towns, I often play a game in my mind, how many churches can I find? Or what denomination is that church? I look at signs and read signs and I begin to ask the question, would I be invited to come to this church? Well, the other day I was traveling through a town in Virginia. And as I was traveling through this town, I began to look at the signs of the election on each side of the town. Some said Joe, some said Trump, some said these lives are matter, some said these lives don't matter. Some said slow down, there's a deaf child. I said, that's a very nice sign, I haven't seen that before. Others had a speed bump and some said, I wish you were living here with us because we have good food. And then I had to figure out where can I go and eat this food. This town was very, very interesting. But then as I got up close to a church, they had a sign outside that said, even during these times, you are welcome here and God loves you. This, I don't know what denomination the church was, but at this moment, I felt the warmth of God come through my soul. As the sign read and as I began to look at the beautiful landscape in the church, I said, this is a place to me that has an open door. This is a place that has an open heart, a place that has an open mind to invite even the stranger to come and to sit a while. The next day on my day home, they then had produce outside of the church. So me as a good Methodist decided, hmm, I must stop and get something to eat and give some money to this church for whatever ministry this might be. I began to go and tell the individual that was there selling, I said, thank you for the sign that was outside of your church. He said, you know, there's these young kids at the church that has TikToks and everything else and they make these signs every week. I said, you must got to be joking. He said, no, we don't know what the church sign will say week to week. These 14 year olds, they come by and they ask for permission to change the church sign. He said, and every week people honk, people wave. He said, and then we see the love of Christ when we come out to give these fruit and these vegetables and sell. You see, friends, the wording of a sign on a building traveling by a stranger like myself was stopped. My heart was changed to know that young people are making a difference to tell all you can come to this place. This place is a welcoming place for you to come. And just like this Samaritan woman, Jesus stops in her tracks to say, come, sit, come to the well, let's have a conversation. Let me tell you some good news. I charge you today, church on the main, to be a church that has an open door, be a church that continues to have an open mind, be a church, dear friends, that you must examine yourselves and really seek 
to live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. The church, the community, and the people need to hear more from you. I say today, don't lose hope. Continue to march forward, continue to do justice, continue to love kindness and walk humbly with our God. Sisters and brothers, continue to lift up this song, Here I am, Lord, send me. I heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you lead me, and I will hold your people in my heart. Because hush, somebody is calling your name. Somebody needs to hear a word of hope from you. And as we prepare this week, as school bells begin to ring virtually online like we are today, as some school districts will begin to have students go into schools this week, as things change on how teachers teach, on conversations begin to happen this week. As another family buries a young man who has died, as persons like me explaining to my nephew, who is mixed, that this is the world that we live in. But God loves him. And there is something that he is here to do, to be somebody in this world. I charge each of you to be the change agents, to be like Jesus and sit at the well and invite all to come to tell them the goodness of Jesus Christ. I invite you to welcome all to your church. I invite you to make a stand in the town of Middletown that no one has ever seen before. I invite you to welcome the stranger, welcome the person who is addicted on drugs, open the place of Jesus Christ, and let all know that at this table, at this church, all are welcome. Go in peace. Go in the peace of God and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sharing the good news that Jesus shared with that Samaritan woman. Come meet a man and be willing to go through Samaria. There might be some difficult journeys. There might be some tough times, but through it all, We've learned to trust in Jesus, and we've learned to trust in God. God will see each of you through in these days to come. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Dee. We now come to the time in our service where we share what is working in us. So if you have something, you can just lift up your hand. Uh, and I'll hit the unmute button. Uh, Sandy, I see you're moving towards. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Demetrio. Um, I just wanted to say hi to him. I haven't seen him in so many years, and it was so good to hear him and what a wonderful message he had today. It just it just resonated in my heart and you know i'm about you know loving everyone like jesus does and just um it really touched my heart thank you demetrio peter uh yes uh thank you very much demetrio for a very fine message and a strong word um i was thinking as the scripture has been read about jesus and the woman at the well the samaritan woman about the difference between uh, loving everybody in general and demonstrating that love in particular. And uh, the radical thing about that passage is not that Jesus loved all the Samaritans. I mean, that may very well have been the case, but that he had stopped at the well and had a conversation with a particular Samaritan woman. And the particularity of that experience made it a very radical moment, uh, such that it is recorded uh, in the Bible as, as, as a major event in Jesus' life 
and a major event uh, for the forthcoming church uh, because he took the time to do this radical thing of having a conversation with a woman. Men were not supposed to speak to women and certainly not at the well where women would gather. And, uh, and this being a Samaritan woman, that the particularity of it all uh, made it uh, extremely significant. And thank you for, for demonstrating that uh, so well uh, in, in your words. Thank you, Peter. I think uh, this week we saw uh, another example of this. Uh, the Jewish Center for Student Life at University of Delaware was uh, burned by arson. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it's part of a rising wave of anti-Semitism, um, which has been ongoing throughout history. Um, and so in response to that, you know, it's one thing to say, wow. do not burn down buildings. Uh, it's one thing to say, Jesus, uh, hold on, I was hearing some feedback. It's one thing to say Jesus uh, loves all people, and it's another thing to say we condemn this arson attack against our Jewish siblings, and we uh, condemn anti-Semitism. And so uh, in living out our public statement on interdenominational and interreligious relations, I wrote, uh, this message on our Facebook, Church on Main stands with our Jewish siblings in condemnation of the recent anti-Semitic arson attack at the Shabbat Center for Jewish Life at the University of Delaware. May the creator of us all unite us in a commitment to end anti-Semitic rhetoric, theology, and violence so that together we may one day know what it means to live in shalom. Um, and I pray that we would see the particulars amongst us uh, so that we don't get lost uh, in a Jesus loves everyone type of thing. And I think I saw Angela uh, a few minutes ago. I wanted to uh, thank Demetrio for um, a very inspiring um, take on the message and the story of Jesus with the Samaritan woman. And I also wanted to comment that it was um, what, what Peter had said, it's, it's very meaningful as a woman to see this woman have such an important role. Um, we're all brothers and sisters. In, in in God's our Father, for all of us, doesn't matter, and it doesn't matter whether you're a man, you're a woman, doesn't matter whether you're black, white, Latino, Asian, whatever, doesn't matter who you love. We're all one, and that's I, I just I just really enjoyed the message, the way that you um, the way that you put it together. And um, Peter pointing out the importance of a woman being in a very important role. So it was a good message. Thank you, Angela. Are there any others? If not, uh, thank you, Dee, for that good word. And I, um, as we prepare for communion,